the 2019 annual merit system meeting for the Douglas County government is called to order. The first thing on our agenda is to welcome you that are here. We appreciate you being here and we also appreciate uh, your input and the input from the people that, uh, that put in perspective changes. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the board to you. We, we know each other and I think we know all of y'all. This is Ed Daniel. He's our vice chair. This is Lynn Brown. She's been with us for a while. And I'm Julian Carter and I'm your chair, all right? Uh, we would like next to uh, I take and entertain a motion to approve the minutes of last year's meeting. I'd like that motion. And I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, we have had had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight perspective changes uh, to the merit system. And if you uh, received a copy of it or a Come on in, Frank. Uh, then you'll know what they are. Uh, we'd, we'll take them in order, uh, just because that's that's the way they're here. Uh, the first one is section 13-8, and it says same compensation, and it's by Matt Laverne. And if uh, you you see that, and it's, it's one of those situations where uh, the board, the safety board is made up of all employees. The one is, is, a, is an elected official, all right? The other two are employees, and one of them being the, with the planning and zoning, I believe. Uh, if I, and then the other one, uh, but there, there's three and they're all, they all three are uh, county employees. Uh, and, and they are <coughs> voted on within the, uh, the county. Uh, and you know, it, it's one of those things, if it, if it was a board, and, and we looked at this, you know, as if, what if one of those three people were not an employee? or an elected official, but the rules and regulations say they all are. So uh, there, there's no reason not to, it, to omit that from, from that. And that would be the recommendation uh, of the board at this time. Are we correct, right. ladies and gentlemen? Yes. That this one will, would be taken to the board. So the vote is three uh, in favor of uh, taking this to the Board of Commissioners to be removed from the merit system. You need a motion on yeah, that? Well, we need some comment. Do we have any comments? Okay, we all, all right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we send this on to the Board of Commissioners. And I second. And I'll, I agree, so it carries, and we do have any, don't have any other fur, uh, further questions, right? Okay, thank you. Num number two, and on the agenda, it is reasons for di disciplinary action 13101, and it was submitted by Robin Moreland. Is Robin here? Okay. It says, uh, this is what it currently reads. Action of the employee which may result in the disciplinary action referred to in section 13100 include, but are not limited to, the following offenses, excessive tardiness and abuse of sick leave. And the recommendation is to change, change to, <coughs> excessive tardiness will be defined as more than three times per month, abuse of sick leave will be defined as more than seven days in any six month period other than permitted by leave of absent policy. So you've got, you've got two things. Excessive tardiness will be defined as more than three times per month and abuse of sick leave 
will be defined as more than three days in any six month period other than permitted by leave of absence policy. All right, do we have any comment from, all right. Okay, get up here. Bobby Holmes, major with the sheriff's office, and I, I don't see Robin here tonight, but me and Lindy and us were talking about it. I don't know that we need to change that because I think it's defined in there as it is. You got different departments in the county, and to be able to define that that way, I, I don't believe there's a reason or a need to do it. I, I don't know why they're doing it, but from our standpoint, it, it's, it's defined already in the merit system. Okay. All right. Let the... I did not read that and I should have. The reason for change, mm -hmm. there is no clear definition in the merit system handbook to define what is considered an excess, excess or abuse. Supervisors need a fair and consistent guideline to follow for disciplinary action. Different departments have different um, circumstances, therefore I think if you put a limit and a number on things, that may unfairly, unfairly affect particular departments. I don't know what the, this is coming from the dog pound, the uh, animal control. I can just speak from sheriff's office standpoint. Well, we, we discussed it at, uh, in, in our uh, meeting when we got all the, the requests in and we, we can look at it across this room or across this table here with four different outlooks and neither one of them uh, would would actually be the same but with Lynn at school if somebody's not there to take care of a child there's some serious problems in my banking days if there wasn't two people there to open that bank mm -hmm. there was serious problems our service just like the sheriff's office uh, mm -hmm. when I was there you had to used to have to wait until somebody got there mm -hmm. before you could leave you couldn't leave a truck sitting without personnel on it mm -hmm. and with those in there to me what's written here is a little bit too lenient and it seemed excessive to me personally it just and I know I'm a dinosaur but in, in the fire department, it's like over the sheriff's office. You better have a doctor's excuse if you're being tardy. Mm -hmm. You know, once in a while is okay. As mm -hmm. long as you are there doing your job 100% when you get there, most departments will work with you. But what I've noticed is it's like the sheriff's department, fire department, 911, the departments I'm familiar with have a written guideline right now. That's what I was going to ask, that you do have, you have your yeah, we, own we can department. Yeah, with what we, we because we, just like the fire department, work in shift work, and it's a little bit, a little bit different than some of the departments in the county. But, yeah, we, we historically have not had a problem defining uh, abusive, abusive sick time and, and excessive tardyism. We've been able to define that within our department. I, I, putting a number on it, I don't know is the best way to do that. That's what I, my position right. is on it. Lindy? I agree. Okay. Lindy West, I agree. Well, and uh, Mr. Mr. Perry did some research with other uh, county cities, other people, and to use your terminology and Ed's mm -hmm. vote, it's just too lenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at this time, this will not be sent, okay. uh, uh, but we'll, we'll vote on it. I make the motion that uh, we leave this as is and no change. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any questions? Any other comments? All right. I agree. There, this will not be sent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. All right. Now, the, the next one is from the Personnel Review Board, and it's Section 1319G. And it currently reads, the Personnel Review Board shall have no authority to review or make recommendations <coughs> regarding employee salaries or the pay plan outlined in Division Three. If, if you look at the book under 1319, 
Uh, and in the, the new book, it is on page, <coughs> believe, five. And it, it, it talks about the personnel review board, how it's formed, and then it goes over to page six, and it goes E in the middle of the page to number one, and it says to hold public hearings, and it goes into all the kind of stuff there, and in, in, the, in the middle of that, Lynn, you kind of got uh, the, the reading as to the, what that says there. What we're wanting to eliminate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Personnel Review Board shall have no authority to review or make recommendations regarding employee salaries or the pay plan outlined in Division Three. And we feel like that that is already <coughs> covered in other sections uh, to the point of it, you know, w w the pay plan, if you, the new pay plan that was put into place, we voted on it and said when that was passed, that would become part of this merit system. And it will be. It will not be printed in here. You'll have it online, won't you, Fred? Yes, sir. That's, that's the way that is. Now, Fred, Fred has done some research on on, on this part, and, and there's some area there that you could say, yes, it is covered, no, it's not. But we think that as, as the board, we would like to send this to the commissioners to have that removed because it's covered in others. And if, if, they, if there is some research that Fred's done or whatever like that, that we can bring that back into line. If, if they approve it or disapprove it within 60 days, we can have it written and be back in here next February uh, with, with the, you know, with a change that would, would do that. But we feel like that G is there. Do we have any comments? Fred, you want to kind of go yeah, into well, it? Well, Julie, he, he we did a lot. Y'all, he, he's done a lot of stuff on, we, on this year's meeting. I want to tell you. We have had some uh, some good productive conversation around this one in particular. Um, the uh, statement in G, I don't end up, uh, personally see where it's stated anywhere else, and of course it gives me a little bit of uh, heartburn to have that eliminated totally. Uh, I think that, um, you know, as I cited in an email to the board that I don't necessarily see a conflict with those. Um, uh, one of the things, one of the conflicts that was cited was um, in, well, I won't go into that, but it's in different sections of the, uh, the merit system where they cited as a conflict. Um, uh, you know, I think that that statement right there is, uh, is, is a, um, a direct statement to the board uh, in regards to recommendations directly on employee salaries or the pay plan uh, that uh, that is approved by the board of commissioners. So we've had some good conversations surrounding it, and uh, just kind of uh, differ with the board in regards to uh, some of the conflicts that they see. And uh, you know, we'll, I guess we'll let the board of commissioners decide. And, and, and that's right, because like I say, one, the pay plan is now in place. You know, and, and if you read the merit system, it says when the pay plan is in place, this will be the pay plan. I mean, it says it. And that, that right there says, I mean, it, that, that, that take care of it. On the, the uh, regarding the salaries, and like I say, there's, there's several different things. But one, it says we can't set salaries. On another place, it says if somebody is uh, it, it, the it case is found for that person, we can, we can say give them back money with money and salary. And salary you know, so it, it's one of those things. So what we're going to do is as a board, and like I say, this is from us and you, you got a copy. We all three signed this. So it's, it's, we, we've agreed that we're going to ask the commissioners to take this out. And uh, I, I may, as a chairman, I'm making that as a motion. Second, I agree. And so, any other comment? Okay, It'll, that that's the way that one will turn out. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Frederick and I totally disagree on this this part right here. <laughs> but it being in conflict, 
But if you read uh, 1319, part one, the first column on page six, about halfway down the page, it's part of the duties of this board. And it says that uh, we're to hold public hearings regarding rules and regulations of the merit system and thereafter to recommend to the Board of Commissioners the adoption of these rules and regulations. Second sentence says, these rules and regulations shall include provisions for the establishment and maintenance of job classification and compensation plans, comma. To me, that second sentence to that comma in part G, part G just completely refutes what part one says, second sentence. In my mind, I'm not an attorney, never have been one, but when you look at that, and it just says that we can't do what part one says we are to do. And that's, that was my reasoning for uh, wanting to see this removed. Uh, and, you know, it, we've disagreed respectfully, uh, but like, he, like uh, Frederick said, at this point, we want to send it on up. We've already voted to now. Send it on up and let the Board of Commissioners make that decision. Uh, it either is in conflict or it's not. And they've got attorneys that's on retainer. I'm sure they can come up with a good answer for us. Thank you. Okay, the vote was uh, recorded as uh, unanimous to ask this to be removed or send it on to the commissioners. All right. The next one is 1342 salary reviews. And it currently reads, on the anniversary date of employment with the county, with the county permanent employee may receive a salary increase not to exceed one step. The salary increase can be denied if the employee's performance rating is marginal or below satisfactory. And the change, the salary increase can be denied if the employee's performance rating is below satisfactory. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. you skipped one. I skipped one. I'm sorry. Forget that. Backing up. You turn uh, two yep, I turned to it once. 13-7-A, positions covered. And this, again, came from the Personnel Review Board. And it's A, all full-time permanent employees of the county are under the merit system with the exception of county administrator, elected officials, clerk of the board of commissioners, members of appointed boards, commissions, and authorities, the county attorney, the, pub, the county public defender, contract employees, and other independent contractors are likewise excluded from the merit system. And we want to add the district attorney. His name just has, has been left off, or her name's been left off. Uh, we just want to add that to that. And do we have any comments from? Fred, you got anything with that? No, one? sir. Okay. Lynn? I make a motion that we send, send this to the uh, Board of Commissioners. I'll yes. second that. All, right. All three in favor. Uh, any other comments? All right. Yeah, this one will go. Now, we'll back up. That's all right. I appreciate you catching that. 1342 salary reviews. On the anniversary date of employment with the county, permanent employee may receive a salary increase not to exceed one step the salary increase can be denied if the employee's performance rating is marginal or below satisfactory. And we want it changed to, or the Personnel Review Board is bringing this, the salary increase can be denied if the employee's performance rating is below satisfactory. And if you'll look at the reason, by removing marginal or the rating system is now clearly defined and established a consistency in the guidelines. And this, this is about as simple as I can put it from, from an old guy that, that does numbers. 
if you've got a sal uh, 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 evaluation that's one through five and you get all threes, you're satisfactory. If you get a five and a two, you still are satisfactory. If you get all threes except for one, two, you're not. And that the numbers are, are the numbers. You know, you can you can have one that you're gonna your department head or your supervisor is gonna say you need work on. But if it if the numbers match out to where it, it comes up to a three, you're satisfactory. And anything below a three is not satisfactory. And that's do we have a comment on that? Scott Spencer, I'm yes, the fire chief. Uh, would you add the overall rating? Because we've got different sections in our evaluations. And as long as the overall rating of the employee is a three. Well, it is not one through five on all of them? If some of them have yeah, more? But, but, but I, if Lisa worked for me uh -huh. and she got a two in accuracy. Uh huh. Uh, in, in one section of accuracy, uh -huh. uh, but overall in that category, she got, if it ended up being a two, when you combine all those with the other categories that she's uh, rated in, it may, she may still get a three overall. And but that, that's, that's the whole point, point of this. Yeah. It, it doesn't leave it to speculation. But, but that's what I'm saying about if it's an overall satisfactory. I, I, what I don't want to happen is if, if, if one of my guys or girls gets a, a low grade mm -hmm. in one of the categories, that should not prevent them from getting a merit increase. Well, all right. I, 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 Does that I, make sense? I, all right. I, I, I thought that's what I said. But okay, are I, you're, I just, all right, just, let, me, let me hear what, what I thought you heard said, Chief. Okay. All right. I'm going to make up, there's 10 categories, mm -hmm. all right? And if you got all those categories of, of five, that'd be 50, mm -hmm. all right? If you got five of them as fives, that'd be 25. Right. And you got another one that all were twos, and you added them up, guess what you'd have? You'd have a three. Mm -hmm. That's what, or is that what you're saying? Are you are you saying something different than that? I just want to make sure that I think we're saying the same thing. Okay. I just the the overall performance rating has to be satisfactory. The overall, not, not individual categories have okay. to be, but the overall has to be satisfactory. Okay. That that's right. as, as long you. as we got yeah. on, on All that. Right. Okay. You Bye. You can't do one just one. Just food for thought. Okay. For the future in reference to the performance appraisals. I know the ones the sheriff's office gets, which I'm not sure if it's countywide. When you get to the page where we talk about this, where it says add up all the points mm -hmm. and divide it and all that, it says on there, round to the nearest number. Uh -huh. The problem with that is this, and something that food for thought mm -hmm. for now is, if I have an employee that's a 2.6, which is below average and below marginal, <clears throat> and I have an employee that is a 3.4, we all agree that's a world of difference in an employee probably. Mm -hmm. But if the thing continues to say round to the nearest whole number, a 2.6 becomes a three and a 3.4 becomes a three and it's the same employee. And we know it's a night and day difference in employee. That's something had we really thought about this, I'd have probably brought four in a formal manner, but something that you might, we might want to think about because with that said, that's going to make most people, I've been there like we just talked earlier, 33 uh -huh. years. I've never seen an evaluation. I've only seen, I've seen less than five evaluations in my career that were below average. I don't, they just don't see them. So to see a 2.6 would be a shock. Mm -hmm. So if it stays the way it is, a 2.3, if you average it to the next nearest whole number, it goes to a three, which is unfair for the employer if you really have an employee who doesn't deserve their raise. I'm not trying to take anything <laughs> away from anybody, but that's a very rare situation. I personally always put the exact number. I make it a 
I make it a 3.4, I make it a 4.3, a 2.9. And I've only ever seen it like a 2.9. I've never seen it below that. But with that said, you've got almost a whole point there of variation that would equal out. And I think personally that's unfair to the employee and it's unfair to, to, the, to an employee who's above satisfactory. So I got an employee over here got 2.6 and he ain't doing nothing. And I got to pull over here to 3.4 and he did a good job. And we're saying they're the same thing. Well, they're, they're both eligible for a raise. If you round it to the nearest whole well, number, yeah, right. But, but, I, but I'm just saying though, yeah. nowhere in the merit system does it says anything about rounding. It doesn't. That's actually yeah. on the evaluation itself. And that's something we, we need to probably discuss okay. after tonight about that a little bit further, right? some okay. more discussion about it. That's the only reason I wanted to bring is, that up. Is that a county-wide rate? I don't know. Well, I have. It was at one time, yes, sir. It was at one time, but I think we tried to check recently. I don't know that it is. I, I don't, don't know that all that departments do the same evaluation. It's a 10-page. What we have is a 10-page evaluation. Is it the same thing with y'all? So I don't know if it is completely countywide, but on that part of it, it does say round to the nearest number, which I believe is kind of something that we need to discuss further about. Okay. I don't, I don't recall the round to the nearest number. All I know is that uh, the – uh, instrument that uh, that I'm accustomed to utilizing, mm -hmm. it will tell you at the bottom whether they are eligible for an increase or not. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it rounds or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, after I'm through with the scoring mm -hmm. and what have you, it will tell me at the on the last page, employee eligible for a merit increase mm -hmm. or employee not eligible for a merit increase. But I will check the round. Yeah, now. we need that's something we ought to look at because it's on it's on the one that we do. So I just want to bring that up. Thanks. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Oh, all right, Mr. Mr. Daniel. Chief Spencer brought up a real good point there. Uh, and I know it's just one of those play on word things, mm -hmm. but just to, to make it black and white and straight where everybody can understand it, if we added overall uh, between employees and performance rating, it would cut out any question of uh, some low numbers because they're going to do exactly what he said. They're going to average those together with the numbers you used. Mm -hmm. And as long as that number comes out at a three or better, that employee is going to be satisfactory. If they come out below a three overall, they're still not going to get a rate increase. Read that for me where you want to add the like word. Right there in our change where it says, the salary increase can be denied if the employee's overall performance rating <coughs> is below satisfactory. All right. Audience, need some, need some input. Yes, sir. I see some of these. I, is there any of these? Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's do this since we can't run up here to the mic. Show me a say to, show of hands if y'all agree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. From from the employees in the room, we we will uh, take your advice and add add those words overall, and, and that we will send to the the commission. I'll make a motion. We send it on to the okay. commissioners. Mrs. And I second. Okay, we all agree. Any other uh, word? All right. Okay. I would like to add that, you know, I, I don't like the word to round up. If I, if, yeah. in, in my school system area, if somebody had a, a 2.6 and this guy over here had a 3.4, I'm glad that was brought up that needs to be addressed in my opinion yeah that is um that would be unsatisfactory okay, so, so we, we've got a unanimous vote that it will go those coming right. okay. then uh the next to the last one is brought by anita granger with the DUI and Drug Court Coordinator, and it's section 13124D, and it currently reads, maximum accumulation, 
Unused vacation leave may be accumulated by the employee from year to year, but, the su but such accumulation may never exceed a total of 35 days, 280 hours slash 40 hour employees, 420 hours slash 56 hour employees. Any hours above this amount at year's end will be added to your sick leave hours. That's the way it reads. Uh, the proposed change, maximum accumulation, unused vacation leave may be accumulated by the employee from year to year, but such accumulation may never exceed a total of 35 days, 280 hours for a 40 hour employee, 420 hours for a 56 hour employee, and then uh, she uh, uh, has to strike out any hours above the amount at year's end will be added to your sick leave, and then any hours above this amount on the last day of the last pay period of the year will be deducted from your vacation time and added to your sick leave hours. The reason, the way it is written now, would leave an employee to would lead an employee to believe that they could wait until the last day of the year to use up any accumulation when in fact those hours are moved into sick time on the last day of the last pay period i e 2018 average would move on december would was moved on december 14 2018 the last day of the last payday in 2018. Right. Any any comments on that? Uh, if you had a chance to look it over, and yes, ma'am. Jenny Eschenberg, oops, and I have nothing to do with the submittal, um, but I hate to make it more confusing, but those hours don't roll over the last day of the last pay period. They roll over that next, the, the Saturday after. The last day is gonna be a Friday. The next day is a Saturday. And those hours then, anything over the 280 hours, roll over then at that point. I have a lot of guys with, that are in this situation. And we go through this, I go through their hours all the time. Mm -hmm. Keep them abreast of what they have. But and I just uh, wanted to, the, in that case that. That particular chance would have been the 15th of December instead yes, of the 8th. Yes, yes. So and for, for most intents and purposes, this pretty much clear, it brings to light something that some people may not be familiar with, that their hours don't extend to the end of the calendar year being December 31st, um, they actually go to the end of the payroll year, which is pretty much the middle of December. Right. Um, but just for a little bit of clarity, it's not the last day of the payroll period, it's the first day of the next payroll year. Any, anybody else have any, any comments? Thank you. Thank you. If you changed it to the first full pay period of the following year, would that take care of that, Fred? Um, well, based upon, I, I, I did speak with uh, Julie Clark in finance. Mm -hmm. She is responsible for, uh, for making this uh, transition of, uh, mm -hmm. of over, uh, overage of vacation time to sick leave. And she was in favor of this. She's saying that uh, that's exactly how she... Yeah how she makes that transition. So I will have to, uh, to yield to what she says and, uh, and I'd have to go with it as written. So, so, so we're agreeing that, that the change too is what Julie wanted? Yes. Because what, well, we're good with that. Mm -hmm. she, she mm -hmm. <coughs> any, any other discussion? Ms. Ms. Brown? Explain to me again, Scott, what, explain to me what you just, um, I'm trying to read and write at the same time. 
It, would you explain that to me again, what you just said, please, if you don't mind? Was, well, well, first of all, if, if Julie, our, our payroll right. clerk, is, is good with this, yeah, I think all the employees are good with that. Yeah. Uh, we just wanted, uh, my suggestion was if, if you just changed it to read the, the first pay period of the new year, that's when all the changeover happened. And the way this is written, I, that's what's going to happen anyway. Yeah. So, right. all right. Well, that's with, with, with that said, does that affect what you said in any way? No, it agrees with that. Yeah. He's just making it simpler. Okay. Yeah. That's why I wanted to go back to him. I thought I saw a difference between what you said and what he said. No, so I, I, I'm just making it more more confusing, probably. <laughs> and, uh, Thank honestly, you. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Perry. That is uh, that that is in line with our accounting people, and it does not really uh, affect the employees in a, in a great way because they're going to be compensated for it in right. the first period of the year, right? That's correct, uh, but I don't. I don't want to change no. what 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 well, she said. You know, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know what how it's written is what she agreed to. So, you know, either or, uh, I think we're saying the same thing. Well, slightly different, slightly different. Either it ends on a Friday or uh, um, it ends or begins on a Saturday. You know, I think that's what we're saying. But uh, but. Just based off of what the uh, the payroll administrator said, that she's in agreement with the way that it's written, you know, I'd have to yield to that. Okay. Ms. Brown. Uh, we're going to send it to the BOC. I think so. I make a motion that this be sent to the uh, Board of Commissioners. Mr. Dane. I'll second that. Any other? All right. We it, this will go to the Board of Commissioners. Number seven. <coughs> Number turn, seven. Turn, you turn the right four. one, though. Good. You got Thank the you. add next. All right. Now, this one says add. Now, uh, where to, I'm not real sure. So I'm going to leave that open right now, but I'm going to tell you what change to was, was suggested. Part-time employee benefits. I would like to propose that part-time employees who have been employed with Douglas County for a minimum of two uninterrupted years be offered vacation days and personal days with pay. The reason I think part-timers part like myself who enjoy their job, work hard and are in compliance with the county guidelines <laughs> deserve to have similar, if not the same, benefits as a full-time employee. All right. I have one thing that sticks out very glaringly. Part-time employees are not covered under the merit system. Now that's 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 very clear. You can you can read it there. So. 1314. Yeah, 1314, Mr. Daniel said. Uh, and with that being said, we, we cannot take this as written from a person who submitted it who is a BOE secretary, right? Because that is a employee of the county in a part-time capacity. Daniel? Uh, we, it says clearly in uh, section 1314 on page four, part-time employees, last sentence in there says that nor shall that part-time person be covered by these rules and regulations. They are not covered by it, so they're not in our jurisdiction. We can't send this on to the Board of Commissioners in my opinion. Ms. Brown? And I, I agree. I second that. Any comments from employees? Okay. All right, the vote. I'll make a motion that we say no. 
And I second that motion. And I vote the same. So this one will not go to the board. Okay. Number eight, section 13122B holidays. All, and the way it reads now, all county employees shall be allowed one personal leave day in lieu of the national celebration of President's Day. The personal leave day will be credited to the employees during the pay period of the employee's anniversary day. The personal leave must be used by the employee's next anniversary date or the employee will lose it. Lose it. The personal leave may be taken at the employee's discretion subject to approval of the department head. And the change to all full-time eligible county employees shall be allowed three personal days leave within the calendar year. The personal leave days will be credited to the employee. And Fred, do you, does that strike out? Yes, this will strike January. out there. Annually in January. Uh -huh. New hires will be allowed one personal day leave upon the completion of their six month probationary period and upon completing one year of service will be allowed all three personal leave days in January. Personal leave days must be used on or before the last day of the calendar year or the employee will lose all remaining. Personal leave days are not accrued from year to year. Personal leave may be taken at the employee's discretion subject to the approval of the department head. And the, excuse me, the, the reason for the change is uh, the Board of Commissioners uh, awarded two additional per personal leave days for the total of three days and requested that we make all personal leave days available in January as opposed to the employee <coughs> anniversary date. Note that the original change to this section was not authorized by the Personnel Review Board and changed aside uh, from the normal procedure spelled out in the merit handbook, merit system handbook. This update will be submitted to the personnel review board for consideration and in line with the prescribed method for handling a, va a valid change to the merit system. And uh, any, any comments? Yes, ma'am. This is just going to duplicate what I was saying before with the calendar year not being in sync with our payroll year. Our payroll year begins, like the 2019 payroll year began in the middle of December 2018. So the language here when it says, <sighs> I lost it. Uh, the la okay, personal leave days must be used on or before the last day of the calendar year. Yes. That may need to be adjusted? No. No. Okay, these, she will make those changes. These personal days are separate from uh, the accrual leave, so yes. they don't fall in line with regular vacation No, time. I understand that. Uh -huh. I do understand that. But Julie, when she does all those adjustments at the end of the year, mm -hmm. I don't know. Doing those separately might be, I don't know what if that's an well, issue or not. Yeah, it won't be. We worked okay. that out with her, and uh, she's, she's in agreement that uh, the first of the calendar year or to utilize uh, personal leave days on a calendar year basis, that's fine. Okay, yeah. then never mind. Thank you. Yeah. Any other, any other comment? Julian, I, I do want okay. to uh, just make a statement. I see that our chairman, Ramona Jackson Jones, has joined us. And I just want to take a personal moment to thank her and the, uh, the Board of Commissioners for allow, affording us two additional personal leave days. Um, uh, the Board of Commissioners, they're big on uh, work-life balance, and this is just one of those uh, examples of that. So, Madam Chair, we thank you. I think I speak on behalf of all the employees uh, of Douglas County when we say thank you for, uh, for pushing this forward and for the Board of Commissioners uh, approving it. I do want to say that um, we jumped the gun on, uh, on making a change. Uh, in this regard, and uh, that's why the reason for the change has an additional explanation on there. We went outside of the uh, prescribed uh, uh, methods for making a change to the merit system, 
And so we're just bringing this before the uh, Personnel Review Board to, uh, to, to make an official change to our merit system so that it will be official, official moving forward. Uh, those leave days were granted uh, January 1 of 2019, so you should be able to see those on your, uh, on your pay stubs now. And uh, to, to piggyback that, we've been doing this, I have almost 33 years. And you may be the second one I've ever seen. <laughs> and that's, uh, that says a lot for you as a person, I'll put it that way, okay? And then uh, the next thing is, is that when this, was, when this was brought to our attention, it was immediately recognized as by this board as being a great thing for the employees. But it's also one of those things that had it been reversed would have not have been a very good thing for the employees or the marriage system. And Fred, I mean, it, just like that, and it was done. And, and I, I attribute that to, to him. And, and I want to tell you all, this man has really worked and helped us with wording, with uh, research, and things like that, that we really uh, don't have the uh, the wherewithal to do. And it, it really does make it a better thing for all of us when we can come in here and bring things that we've all discussed. You know, we may have heartburn, and, and I was telling Fred that the other day. I'm 73 years old almost. I'm a big man and I've never had heartburn. <laughs> so I, so I, I don't know what heartburn feels like, but undoubtedly somebody does and they don't like it. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I do want to thank y'all for being here. I want y'all to, to understand that we try our best to do what we can for the county. And, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I know these two people do too, because we, we've got a lot of our time and our life invested living in this place, and y'all have done a great thing for all of us for a lot of years, and we want it to continue that way. Uh, Fred, do you have anything? That's it. Either, either, either. No, ma'am? Not yet. Well, thank you. <laughs> Lindy West, I think it's a great idea, Mr. Perry. However, I do have one question for clarity. Are we going to allow our employees January 1 through December 15th to take 31st. This? 31st. December 31st. Okay, uh -huh. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, that, that clarification is there, uh, that it's to, at the discretion of the employee, but it's got to be cleared with their department head. They, they just can't up jump and, and, and do it. Okay. All right. any, any other comments? All right. Can I make a motion that we uh, send this on for approval? Right. Ms. Brown? And I second that. And, and, uh, and I do too, so it, the motion carries. Uh, Y'all, that, that is the, 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 pro, the proposed changes, uh, the action of what will be taken for those changes. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. And thank you thank all, all for coming out. Thank you all for coming.